Five different integers are selected from 1 to 6, and one integer is placed into each of the five squares shown. The integers are placed so that the sum of the three integers in the vertical column is 7, and the sum of the three integers in the horizontal row is 11. Which integer does not appear in any square? We have to choose from these th six integers, and the first criteria is the vertical column, this one, top to bottom, has to equal 7. So I've got to choose three numbers that equal 7. So let's see here. I'll choose the 1, the 2, and the 4. I think that's the only way of doing it, too. So I'll put the 1 here, 2 here, and the 4 here. If this works, great. If it doesn't work, I'll try a different order. That takes care of the first criteria. The next criteria is the horizontal row has to add up to 11. So I've already got the 2 in there in the center. So I need to choose two more numbers that add up to 9, right? Because the 9 plus the 2 would be 11. That would be a 3 and a 6. And I think that's it. So the number that does not appear in the square is the 5. So number 21, uh, the answer is E. In the diagram, 17 toothpicks are used to make a 2 by 3 grid of squares of the toothpicks used. 10 are outer and 7 are inner. Suppose that toothpicks are used to make a 20 by 24 grid of squares to the nearest percent. What percentage of toothpicks are used are inner toothpicks? All right, well, obviously they give you this example to kind of uh, explain the question a little bit. You've got 17, and these are the outer ones that I will sort of highlight in red. I don't think I need to, but, you know, just to be complete. And as you can see, they've even told you that 10 of them are outer. And then the other, other ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, they're saying are the inner ones. So that's basically uh, just an, an example. Then they're saying they're going to make this big, big one, 20 by 24. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to draw it all out, but basically it's going to be big. And then they're saying how many are outer and how many are inner. So let's talk about that. Let's, let's discuss outer and then inner, and then we'll make the percentage. Well, the outer one should be probably the easiest because if it's a 24 by 20 grid, then on this side, there'll be 24. There'll be 24 here. And on this side, there'll be 20. And there'll be 20 here. So outer uh, looks to me like the easier calculation 24 plus 24 plus 20 plus 20 and I believe that's 88 yeah okay inner is going to take a little bit more uh, discussion okay so here we go this is obviously going to be 20 such rows right because this is 20 now I'm not going to draw them all in but you guys understand and similarly there will be 24 columns going across like that so let's talk about this Let's first just talk about the ones that are like this, the ones that are going to be uh, standing vertically like this. How many of them would there be in each row if you just keep going? Well, after a little bit of consideration, you will figure out that it's 23 of them. And similarly, there will be 23 uh, vertical toothpicks in that row and 23 in that row and so on. So the total number of rows is 20. So in each of those 20 rows, there'll be 23 uh, toothpicks that are standing vertically. Okay, so that's pretty good. And 23 times uh, 20 is, I believe, 460. Now I'll use a different color. Now we have to figure out how many are horizontal. So for example, um, these guys right here, these ones, how many of these toothpicks, you see what I'm saying? So let's just concentrate on just that. It, well, if it's going all the way across, I think it's 24. So there'll be 24 of these horizontal toothpicks. So 24, but then we've got a whole bunch of rows. You got this row, you got this row. How many of those rows? And be careful. Only 19, because we're not going to count the top one, and we're not going to count the bottom one. So that takes a little bit of thinking to figure out the, 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 the numbers, what the numbers are. 
So 24 times 19 is 456, I believe. Yeah. So then this is the total uh, inner. So that's what, uh, 916. So the percentage would be uh, toothpicks inner over total. So inner is 916. And the total is 916 plus that 88 that we calculate over here. So that is 916 over 1004, and that's approximately 91%. And therefore, number 22, the answer is E. A rectangular prism has integer edge lengths and has a volume of V. The six faces of the prism are painted, and then the prism is cut into one by one by one cubes. Of these cubes, 50 cubes have no paint on them. What is the average of all possible values of V? So let's just make a little cube here so I can illustrate what's happening. So here's our cube, and we'll just call the dimensions A, B, and C. Now, in order to count the cubes that have no paint, it's basically the inner ones. So all the ones that sort of have that kind of uh, appearance, that they'd be inside, so that you wouldn't count that top layer. So that would basically mean this would, uh, this dimension here looks to me like C minus 2, uh, let's see here, yeah, this one here, I'll just call it region 1, would be C minus 2 times B minus 2. I think that's right. Yeah, and then so on. This region 2 would be A minus 2 times B minus 2 because you're subtracting 1 from each side. You're subtracting 1 from here and 1 from here, 1 from here, 1 from here because they're all going to be 1 by 1 by 1 and so on. This region 3 would be uh, C minus 2 times A minus 2, right? But we are actually looking at the total volume. So the total volume of uh, these cubes that have no paint is 50 cubes. Now each cube is a 1 by 1 by 1 cube. So each cube has a volume of 1. So 50 cubes would have a volume of 50 times 1. And their dimensions would be A minus 2 times B minus 2 times C minus 2. So that is the setup of the question. Okay, so what's next here? What's next is we have to figure out how do we get 50 by multiplying three integers. Okay, so that that is not extremely difficult, but a little challenging. I'm going to do a little bit on the side, a little bit of math on the side. First, I'm going to break up 50. What is 50? I believe it's 2 times 5 times 5, right? So that's really 2 to the power of 1, 5 to the power of 2. So that means the prime factors would be 1. Sorry, not prime factors, just factors. It don't have to be prime. 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. I'm just doing this to kind of help me figure out what possible ways I can break up 50 into three different numbers. So let me see. I think 1 times 5 times 10, that would be one way to get 50. 1 times 1 times 50, that's another way. 1 times 2 times 25. 2 times 5 times 5. And I think that exhausts it. Yeah, I think that exhausts it. Okay. So then, for each of these, we have to figure out the corresponding values for A minus 2, B minus 2, and C minus 2. Well, that's what these are. But then we would have to figure out the corresponding values for A, B, and C. I think, yeah, that is what we need to do. So if, if this is A minus 2, that means A would be 3. If this is B minus 2, then B would be 7. And if this is C minus 2, C would be 12. And therefore, A times B times C, which is the volume, that in this case, 3 times 7 times 12, I believe, is 252. So that is how we would figure this out. 
Similarly, this is going to be 3, 3, and 52. And then this would be 468. This would be 1, 2, and 25 would be 3, 4, and 27. And that's going to be 324 for the volume. And then the last one, 4, 7, and 7, and that's 196. So they want you to first figure these out and then figure out the average. Well, the average would be the sum, which I believe is 1240 of those four numbers divided by 4, and that's 310. So 310 is the answer to a relatively cool question, and that would be choice B. A three-digit integer is an integer from 100 to 999 inclusive. A three-digit integer is called tiny if no rearrangement of its digits gives a three-digit integer that is smaller. For example, 138, 207, and 566 are tiny, but 452, 360, and 727 are not. How many three-digit integers are tiny? Okay, before I rush into the question, let's discuss a little bit about what they are talking about. First of all, why are those tiny? Okay, let's just see why 138 is tiny. What are the rearrangements? Well, there's 183, there's 318, there's 381, there's 831 and 813, right? These are the rearrangements. Now, of these rearrangements, the smallest one is 138, so therefore it's tiny. Now let's look at this one, 452. Why is this one not tiny? Well, I can make a rearrangement, 245, that is smaller. And since that's smaller, this number is not tiny. Does that make sense? So then they're saying, of all the numbers from 100 to 999, how many of them are tiny? So oof, we've got to have a systematic approach here. So I think there would be three steps here. Let's just see what happens. The first type of number that I will look at is a number of the form x0, 0. So x is some digit from 1 to 9, and 0 is the digit 0. I'll just write it out, just in case you're wondering. 0. So these are obviously the numbers of the form 100, 200, 300, all the way up to 900. These qualify as tiny, because any rearrangement would either be the same or would not be a three-digit number, correct? Because if you rearrange this, it would be 100 zero, zero again if you flip the zeros, or if you put the zero out front, it would no longer be a three-digit number. So it doesn't, these ones don't even qualify. So these are indeed tiny numbers, and then we'll have a little tally. And I think th this is 9, right? So then put a 9 there. Okay, so that takes care of the first type of tiny number. Then we have the next type. Let's move this up a bit. Probably going to need a little bit more space. The next type of number is, again, we're going to have an X here, but we're going to have a 0 here, but this one is not a 0. This is, we'll just put a Z here. And Z has to be greater than or equal to X. So, for example, something like 101 or 102 all the way you know, up to 109. Something like 202, 203, all the way up to 209. Something like 303, 304, all the way up to 309, and so on. And the last row would just be a 909. So as you can see, these all qualify as tiny numbers. You can see that when you rearrange them, you will not be able to get any number smaller. If you, or you might get a number that does not qualify because it's not a three-digit number. So how many do we have uh, in total? Well, for the 100s, we got 9 here. For the 200s, we'll get 8. 300s, we'll get 7. And then all the way down, we get w just 1 for this. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 9. And you can do that math. That totals 45. Okay, moving right along. Now we got the third and final one. That's of the form x, y, z. So this is obviously a little bit more complicated. Okay, X, Y, Z, so all three digits are non-zero. So now, how do we approach this? Uh, table, we now have 165. So now we got to add up these guys. And when you do, you get 219. So 219 is the answer. In the original question, that was choice E. So 
Suppose that w, x, y, z, x plus y, x plus z, 234 plus z, and 234 minus z are eight different prime numbers. If w plus x plus y is 234, and each of the y and z is less than 50, the value of w minus y is. Okay, so a lot to discuss here. First, all of these are prime. There's eight numbers. And they're different prime numbers, so that's important. And then y and, le and z are less than 50, so y is less than 50, and z is less than 50. Okay. And I think we have to find w minus y. So let's discuss this one step at a time. So the first piece of information that they give us is that w plus x plus y is 234. Now, if you remember, every prime number is odd. All primes are odd, except one prime. There's only one prime number that's even, and that is the number 2. The number 2 is the only prime number that is even. So now let's go back to this one. We've got three numbers that are primes that add up to 234, and 234 is an even number. Is that possible? Well, if they're all odd, the answer is no. If you, put, if you take any three odd numbers and add them, they will end up giving you an odd number. Like, for example, whatever, 3 plus 5 plus 7, you can see that's 15. 15 is odd. But I have to come up with an even number. And the only way that's possible is if one of these guys is that number 2. Now, which one? That I don't know. But I know for sure that one of these is 2. So that's the first uh, one of them is 2, the number 2. So that's the first piece of, uh, I guess, of the puzzle that we need to um, establish. And we have established that. Okay, so now let's move on. Now we have to figure out which one of those three. Well, the Z cannot, even though we're not talking about z, we're talking about w, x, and y. I know that z is not the 2. Why? Because if z was 2, then this guy would be 234 plus 2, which is 236, and 236 is not a prime number. Remember, all of those have to be primes. So d z is not the 2. Okay, we don't really care at this point, but that's pretty good to know. Now I have to figure out which one of these is a 2. I think it's this one here. This is actually this is what I'm looking at. Why? Because y is prime, correct? And then if I add to y something, it remains a prime. And the only way that's possible is if one of them is a 2. So for example, x plus y has to be prime, right? And so does x plus z. That also has to be prime. And the only way, I think, is if x is 2. Like, for example, if x was 2 and y was 3, then we'd have 5. If x was 2 and y was, uh, if z was 5, we'd have 7. You see how it works out when x is 2? So after careful consideration, I am confident that x is 2. So now we've got another piece of the puzzle, and that's sort of how this question works. You've got to just sort of work your way through so now, now that I have a pretty decent amount of information, let me revisit this list here, this list up top. Okay, I've got W. I don't know what that is. I've got X, which I have established as 2. I'll just put X equals 2. And then I've got Y. Well, I don't know why. I've got Z, and don't know what Z is. And then x plus y, I'll just put 2 plus y, since I know what x is. x plus z, I'll put 2 plus z. And then these numbers, unfortunately, I don't know the value of z yet, but I hope we'll figure that out pretty quickly. So there we go. All right, so now we're moving right along. We have a little bit more information than when we started. So what's next now? Now I'm going to go back to this equation, since I know what x is. It'd be w plus 2 plus y is 234. And therefore, w plus y is 232. 
W plus Y is 232. Okay. So again, now I have to figure out what can W and Y be? I have to obviously get at those values. So at this point, it looks like I'm a little stuck here because there's no other information the question gives me up here. So I have to, I think, just go back to the basics and look at these guys. I'm going to actually look at y and 2 plus y. That they both have to be prime. Both are prime. And I think that will help me. And similarly, z and 2 plus z. 2 plus z. Those also both have to be prime. And there's a very important clue that they gave me uh, that I think I have summarized up here that y and z are less than 50. That helps a lot because it narrows our choices down because if they had not given that clue, then we'd, this question could go on forever. So since they're less than 50, we have sort of a finite amount of choices. So let me just figure out z and 2 plus z, keeping in mind that z is less than 50. Now, I have some choices here. Uh, for z and z, z plus 2, um, the smallest prime is, that is, remember I established that z is not equal to 2, so the smallest prime it could be is 3, therefore z plus 2 would be 5, then 5, and then that would be 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, I'm basically choosing prime numbers that differ by 2, and then 29, 31, and then 41, and 43. And I think at that point, I can be assured that I've exhausted my table since z has to be less than 50. Then what I'll do is I'll take 234 plus z, which is this guy up here, and 234 minus z, and see if those become prime numbers, because all of them have to be prime, remember. All right, let's see. And if it works out, great. If it doesn't, then we know that that is not the value for z. Okay, doing this really quickly, this would be 237, 231, 239, 245, and which one of these are primes, which of these are not primes? Let's circle the ones that are not prime. I believe that's not prime, that's divisible by 5, that's not prime, that's divisible by 5, that's not a prime, that's not a prime, and that's not a prime. So the only one where all four are prime is that row right there. So that means z is 5. So this guy here is equal to 5, this z. And therefore, this would be 7, correct? And then this number would be 239. And this number is 229. Okay, so that's some pretty good progress there. Okay, so now I still haven't figured out why, but that, that's sort of the, the way to, to, to figure out these numbers and yeah okay so now let's use the same sort of tactic to figure out why so we've got y y plus 2 and then w well w I'll use this formula w will just be 232 Min 232 minus y. So w, which is 232 minus y. All right, so let's see here. Again, y is less than 50, so that makes our choices uh, limited, which is a good thing, because otherwise it would take forever. So let's see what we get. Okay, again, 3, 5, uh, 7, 11, 3, 5, 
Seven eleven. Seventeen. Twenty nine. Forty one. But some of these we can't count because remember they're all different. That's a very important. It says that in the question. All these eight primes are different. So if some number has already been selected, I can't use it. So you see how z is already equal to five. So this one I can't. This z plus two is seven. As you can see, this guy right here. So that seven I can't include. So I'm going to include obviously the three, the eleven, the seventeen, twenty nine, forty one. Okay, so. Got to make sure that I don't include the ones that have already been chosen. Okay, so this would be 5, 13, 19, 31, and 43. And then these numbers would be 229, 221, 215, 203, and 191. So let's see here. Uh, that's obviously a divisible by 5. That's not a prime. That's not a prime. 229. 229. But 229 is already included here. So I can't use that number again. So therefore, I can't use that. So therefore, the only number remaining is that 191. So we conclude, finally, that this W is 191. And that happens when Y is 41. And therefore, what we wanted to figure out, which is W minus Y, is... Uh, 191 minus 41, and that's 150. So the W minus Y that they wanted me to figure out is 150, and that is choice B. So if we have a number of the form X, Y, Z, so we have X, Y, and Z like this. Let's start with just X, the value of X. And if it's 1, We'll just put 1 for the value of y, and then see what possible values we can have for z. z can be anywhere from 1 to 9. And try it. If you do, you will notice that all of those will qualify as tiny numbers. So that's why we get 9. Keeping x as 1, then move y up to 2, then we'd have a 1, 2 something situation. And as long as the z is greater than or equal to 2, again, we'll have a situation where the number is tiny. So then we have 8. And then if you continue this, keeping the x as 1, y is now moved up to 3, z has to be at least 3 or higher, we get 7. So all of these will have a very predictable pattern. And then again, you will add these all up. And when you do, uh, you, you get 45. And then you just repeat the same thing for a value of x equals 2. Now you get y equals 2. This number has to be at least 2. We get 8. Again, x equals 2. y is now moved up to 3. z has to be at least 3. And we get 7. And then so on. So this will be uh, 6. And so on. So you make that pattern. and You will get that 45, that 36. When x equals 3, you will get just adding from 1 to 7, which is 28. From when x equals 4, you'll get from 1 to 6, which is 21, and so on. And then the grand total will be adding all those guys up. And when you do, you get 165. So now we go back to the original 